we don't know what's happening by by stigmatizing any culture that has gendered expectations, which is all of them. Mm. And um, if you don't mind, where do you stand politically in the kind of grander scheme? So I, I'm not really fussed. You know, I, I vote Democrat, I vote Republican, but I mean, like, where do you think we're headed as a society? You guys in America and just, I guess, the West in general, because things are changing rapidly. At least they are here. Mm-hmm. There's, there's been such a big okay. change in the last 10 years, 20 I'm, years. I'm worried I guess. that we're 20. headed towards a, a, a sort of theocratic revolution that I don't think any of us want to be on the other side of. Absolutely all. not. I, I, I think that it's, it's a lot easier to prevent an Iranian revolution than to undo it. And it seems like there is a bit of a takeover happening where, where they are designating and marking the priest class and, and having them invest with their crown to flesh and, and putting them in key situations. And it, it's it's quite terrifying. Uh, I'm so glad that we think exactly the same. Uh, I, I joke about politics. and well, I, I, I used to call myself a Democrat. I certainly can't with what Biden's doing with women anymore. Uh, it's... Uh, yeah. So I, I, I joke that I'm not on the left or the right. I'm in the center, or so I'm in the center. No, so I'm not on the left. I'm, I'm in the cabin like a sane person. I'm not on the left wing or the right wing. Yeah, I'm in the cabin like a sane person. You should be. I feel like most people should be not on either side until it's time to vote, and then they can choose. Yeah. I, I don't see the point in living your life between elections as one side or the other. You have to be open to the best. Yeah, and thinking how to uplift the discourse and, and how to challenge. Yeah. Uh, each other and, and, and not trying to categorize people politically um, but trying to find common ground that you can work towards I feel like that's a better use of time so, yeah so um, I, I don't expect I, I have a lot of, of beliefs and I, I don't expect people to agree with a lot of them I probably no. won't agree with some of them in a few years but if yeah. it happens I'm willing to <laughs> to believe things today that I might disagree with tomorrow because I think that that's important for free thought I believe in free speech and free free thought and yeah. Being willing to be to be wrong, but sincerely wrong, you know. Um, yes. But uh, I don't think I'm wrong here. Not at all. Neither do I. Um, what um, What do you think about the state of free speech? I well, when you have a situation where where it's prioritized to uh, be advertising how you mentally picture other people all the time, and 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 it's normalized to harass on the basis of perceived errors, uh, even when you knew who they were talking about, even when you don't have a reason to think that it was malicious in some way. You know, when, when you have a paradigm that pronouns refer to sex, I have a basis to object if you're consistently referring to me as a he, because it's factually yeah. incorrect. Yeah. But if we, if we say that pronouns have to do with gender, I don't really have a basis for objecting anymore for saying, you know, you, you, you don't refer to me that way. Hmm. Um, but that's why it's 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 not quite the same. Like if, if you you can object on the basis of having your pronoun refer to some a sex that you're not, um, whereas is it's it's not the same if I'm referring to you by your sex and you don't want to be referred to by your sex. They want to say that that's the same thing that that both of us <coughs> have a preferred pronoun. So how dare you? But it's not the same because one of them is rooted in biology and in truth. And so objectivity. here up until four years ago. In the Oxford English Dictionary, and this is the one I'm going to take because it's English English, uh, it's, it used to say gender, synonym of sex, sex, synonym of gender. Mm-hmm. I actually have a picture of that. And I took the picture because I told my son that they would change that in the next couple of years. And they did. So? Oh, they did. did. They already did. What is gender? Uh, well- so now gender says something like the uh, the act of which se- you know which sex you which sex role you portray or something like that. It's something to do with like which you portray in public. Okay, so but and then how sex does that have to do with your of... identity. But the whole thing is just a sort of wrapped up puzzle, isn't it? Because it's just like a catch twenty two. If there is no such thing as biological sex, or or if there is no such thing as like a, a set gender. Then why would you need to change? Yeah. And I, I they must know that. Yeah, and so you you have you have the different different uh, explanations that have cropped up for why 
and the different the different denominations. So so Our Lady of the Perpetual Hormone Replacement Therapy, uh, which it is. Uh, <laughs> The sect, the sect that I consider myself to have been in at the time, because I really uh, is is the doctrinal that there is that they they think that um, there's some biological basis to being trans, so that, that in some way like the like like I remember imagining somehow that that I had some gene that meant that that biologically I needed to have more more testosterone. But I was a female, so I didn't make enough, and that that's that's what created my my issues. And so maybe if I did this hormonal intervention that like suppressed the estrogen, maybe I would feel better, uh, which I thought at the time and and pursued and was right. I was wrong about why I was right, but I was correct that that would help, and um, it felt like validation of of those those beliefs. Um, mm -hmm. But then you also have the people that are just kind of seeking to 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 achieve a vibe. The United Church of the Internal Congruence where they don't necessarily believe that they biologically need testosterone, but they do believe that they need testosterone so that they can grow a beard because they really want a beard. <laughs> I just, I, uh, yeah, I sometimes feel like I'm in a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what it's I mean? You, you think that this, this is not what I expected to be happening five years ago or 10 years ago, maybe I should say 10 years ago. And now it's I look around. Lot. They used to be like, don't go to the liberal universities. They're dangerous. Yeah. No, they're not. <laughs> I went to the little yeah. university and it's like, oh, you're 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 getting your breast cut off. <laughs> it's and, and the worst thing is it's that uh, I'm British, so dark humor is a kind of big thing for me. You know, a lot of it's funny. Like I laugh when you say, you know, you go in there and getting your breast cut off, but they're doing that and I cannot imagine, like, I love my son so much. You know, it hurts. There's nothing I wouldn't do for him. And I imagine most parents feel that way. And I cannot imagine the pain of having, like, a daughter and then she just comes home and she's like, hey, Dad, I want you to call me Steve and I'm going to grow a beard and chop my norks off. I... Uh, I feel like you would just become instantly suicidal, maybe. It's I mean, I guess you're, you're gonna... I can only imagine, like, like to be a father and to, to I can imagine being being a mother. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, for, yeah. Yeah, like, uh, but I mean, it's different for if you're a father too. Like, you're just like, what did what did I do probably to give you the message that you're so ugly? As a yeah. woman, I would imagine that that might be a thought that would cross your mind. Yeah. How, how did I mess up as a man to teach you that, that it's better off for you to be a man? Yeah. Did I, did I, did I not tell you that you were good enough? Did, how, how did the cultural messages get to you? Yeah. God, man, it's so sad, isn't it? I, I... And it's so predatory, the pressure to go on it soon. Like you need to go on it now or it won't work as well. Like they, yeah. they, they want to get you on it now. They, they don't, yeah. they don't want you to think too hard about it. Is it different in California and, and a, I guess a couple of other states than perhaps in the rest of the US? Like, is it, you know, the, the situation with the trans issue must be quite different in central California than it is, for example, in Montana or somewhere where there are some more people. Maybe Kansas would be a better example. Oh, it's... It's, it's, it's hard to say because I feel like it's also about when the area was exposed to the, the trans yeah. topic might be part of it. Um, like, like from, from, from like what you're telling me about the schools, I'm, I'm wondering if it's when, when it shows up in these less like liberal progressive, um, like, like college town enclaves, like, like that I'm in that, that is it almost acting like kudzu? Is that why it's spreading so wildly? Like mm. it's totally this new wild like idea meme that's already mutated to the point of sounding very truthy and being very customizable. Mm. You know, there's, they have so many more like gender Pokemon now than, than they did when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. When, when yeah. I was a kid, if you go to professor Oak, you get, you get given man or woman. That was it. Yeah. I can get like a gender and gender flux and gender squiggle. I know. I hear them from my son because he tells me, you know, another girl that he was friends with at school is now yeah. wants to be called Dave, and she's why you know, Dave? 
Like I don't Dave. know. No. They love the bricklayer's name. No. So Steve, Dave. They love the bricklayer's name. Yeah, Steve, Dave, Phil. Out here, they like Aiden and Caden and, and oh, Al- yeah, no. uh, uh, Ash and, you know. No, we don't have any of that. Kai. It's, all, it's all very rudimentary out here. But it's heartbreaking because I know some of these kids and they're really sweet, pretty little girls, you know, really nice kids. And then they're like, but the thing is, it's not just the fact that they now want to be trans or they want to change their name or they want to go to school with trousers because I think, I think girls should go to school with trousers. They want to anyway. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that like their whole life changes. They become what they call part of what they call the rainbow kids which is very kind of Michael Alec. They all hang around at break time together. They mm. all follow everything on the sort of furthest left um, part of t- of uh, Twitter. Yeah. And they'll talk about it at lunch break and which Black Lives Matter song and dance we're going to do today. And it just changes their entire being. Like they are no longer that child. They get it's converted. Like they, yeah. It's a, they, they get converted into a, a religion that's centered around like, what if the fifth grade class president candidate actually won and was able to implement all of his like promises? Like, I'll make the yeah. teachers call you, call you whatever you want. You know, we'll have. Yeah. It's, it's horrifying. It's toxic, uh, it's always... and, then, and, and the uh, school-based predators who are targeting and grooming certain kids for this as a pretext to create like an opportunity for a, a sexually inappropriate discussion. <sighs> You know, they're, they're, we're all treating them as if it's automatically good faith that, a, that an adult is doing that, which is, of course, just telling the sex predators this is the way to do it. Yeah. This, this yeah. is the, the most deniable way. And, you know, sp- speaking of that, we recently had a girl that was involved in a situation with a guy who pretended to be into anime. I hope that's not the sexual one. That's just the cartoon no, one. No, hen- right? hentai is the sexual one. The yes, one sorry. Is, no, just a- yeah, anime just, is fine. Yep, just anime. So there's other there's other ones too that I, I could probably list off. I spent too many too too much time at anime conventions. Yeah, I mean, realizing it's all, it's that pretty... I probably wasn't more like I was a very 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 toe in the water kind of anime convention person. And, oh yeah, and only for a couple of years. You weren't full oh, wow. furry, or okay. <laughs> Um, but yeah, the, anyway, so this girl w- was kind of groomed by uh, a guy on a forum who was, uh, you know, pretending to be a, a sort of relatively young anime enjoyer. And uh, anyway, something that it, it kind of made me realize was a lot of the people that are getting involved in this, this kind of sounds a very like 90s sort of Christian thing to say, but I'm just going to say it anyway because it's the truth. I see a lot more of the creative kids becoming mm-hmm. trans do you know what i mean like uh, i see a lot of the kids that are really arty you know uh, i feel like maybe they think it adds color to them to be trans yeah i, I definitely think there's a there's a big motive there to be uh one of the special ones yeah one, one of the different ones because they're they're seen as as people who have a special access to the idea of like what does it mean to be this or that to be transgender what is what does gender mean and so so by by taking on that identity you it, it, it it's a way that they have cultural support to say to be an expert in something to know the most about something um, mm. and to have special knowledge and to have control uh interpersonal control again uh to have an explanation for feelings of teenage alienation that are likely just normal feelings of teenage alienation yeah uh, a lot of times too with the maybe there's overlap here with with the creatives but with um you know when you have aut- autism spectrum disorder uh especially a more high functioning side of it where where they understand language just fine but they don't understand the social piece at all yes like that's yeah. the hallmark of the disorder is that they don't understand the social piece yeah uh they're 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 hitting adolescence and they're trying to figure out how male female interactions work work or how how if they're um you know how how, how these sexual interactions unfold yeah. um and 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 why um and this is an explanation for why they don't understand that and a license to try to negotiate about it that's scary yeah. So yeah, well, that's appealing that, to some people. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense though, doesn't it? Because you you see with a lot of autistic kids that 
they're great kids, but they and they'll just happily tell you. I just don't think I understand how to act with other people. Yeah. It looks like it's so easy for everyone else, but mm-hmm. I find it really awkward. Mm-hmm. And like you say, this is almost giving them uh, something to try. Yeah, it's it, it's if if you feel like you don't understand what's going on, it's probably because somebody else had a gender expectation of you that was wrong. Yeah. So it's it. it's it's not really like you're kind of freed from the burden of trying to figure out the larger theory of everything. And yeah. I feel like that was one reason that 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 the intensive talk therapy helped me so much was that um, it was practice trying to figure out another person's perspective, name the therapist, and my yeah. my own. And yeah. and so over time, it just got clearer and clearer to me how interactions evolved over time so yeah. i stopped i attributed less and less of it to what i was wearing and consequently what i was wearing became less and less important mm. so i stopped like feeling like i needed to look a certain way to have the kind of day i wanted to have yeah do you feel like you're happier now than you were then yeah yeah, yeah. no I, I definitely yeah then to then, the core then therapy yeah i've 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 i feel like I can see my value to other people. I couldn't see that before. It was very, very lonely. Yeah. So Do you think social media has helped you with that? Social media has helped, but I felt that way before. Like that that's okay, what allowed that's... me to get onto social media was that I saw how important I was to the people in my life and also how important my ideas had been to them. Uh, so I wanted to share them. Uh, but I wouldn't have been able to do that if I hadn't been able to imagine that that they would have been well received by people. And yeah. I don't think I would have been able to do that before therapy. How old were you when you got therapy, if you don't mind me asking? Um, I started, well, I first started in, in, in I got I got a little bit of therapy as a teenager, but not really for gender stuff okay. or, or stuff related to that. It was more related to other, other but it wasn't long enough, I don't think. Um, for this stuff, though, it was kind of like college was, was the first time. So it would have been like 20, 21 when yeah. I started. Um, but then it really, uh, wasn't enough even then for a few years. Cause I was still in college and so I was only getting a few sessions a semester and then I got to graduate school and, um, that was also helping. Uh, and then I had a loss and increased the therapy at that point to, uh, mm-hmm. actually based on my, my rec- therapist recommendation, I was going multiple times a week. So I went, it got really intensive at that point. And that was, um, I was, I was, uh, 29, 20, 28, 29. Um, but even the weekly therapy had really helped when I, from when I was about 27, I would say that's, that's when it, the, I started to see a big shift. It was, it was midway through grad school, uh, from the weekly therapy. And then, the the really, really a lot of work benefited from when I was, um, after I increased for a few years. So okay. I definitely feel much, much happier. Just, just, I feel like I get it. I feel like I get why other people like, like, I just, I really couldn't see the point of, of, of like why it just Full felt stop. like there was so much, so much time. And like, I didn't, I didn't see a way forward. I didn't see a point to anything. And now, now I see that I have a lot to give and people are waiting to get those gifts and I can give them yes. to them and it's an enjoyable experience to give. And it's just, it feels weird to talk about because I feel like I sound, I'm, I'm making myself sound like a complete sociopath and I wasn't, you know, I was. No, you don't at all. just didn't click. You know, I wanted yeah. to be a good person, but there was something I just couldn't see about why things happened. That, and it was must have been a brain development thing. I think I just, partly my, my, my brain hadn't fully gr- finished growing yet, but I also needed the therapeutic support and practice to learn how to do that skill. Where it yeah. Would so it's good that I got it before my brain had finished developing in my 20s. But there was like a, just a, a shift, a shift maturity, mm. but um, but a huge. I, I, I do he, attribute a huge amount to to the practice I had, and and the the um, support I had from therapy. I think it can be difficult if you're quite intelligent. For for some people as well. Um, yeah, I like. I've, I've I've made a video about that too. Yeah, like my brother, he's doing seventeen years in jail. And he has, I know a lot of people are like, IQ doesn't mean anything, but he has like 170 IQ. I definitely mean something. Yeah. And, um, you know, he was one of those annoying kids that in STEM fields could get A mm-hmm. stars, but never did any work. That and uh, he's just been a career criminal his whole life. And he is 
hyper intelligent, like mm-hmm. terrifying intelligent. He manipulates people. He manipulates the prison guards. He manipulates the prison mm-hmm. uh, religious people. And he is a scary guy, but his biggest problem was in his teens. He just couldn't get it. He was like, I yeah. just don't get it. Like, what, what, what like am I he here to brilliant, do? Brilliant, but emotionally stunted. Yeah. It's tragic. I, yeah. I, I feel like when you're really smart, it's hard because, you know, you're not like other people. So you don't get other people. You can't rely on your knowledge of yourself to understand other people. So you're at yeah. an advantage. And then you also are smart, so you don't need other people so much. That's so you him. Have the same motivation to practice by trying to learn from other people. Yeah. So you, you, you just kind of like double whammy. I, I I I attribute that a lot to myself too. Of, of like, um, I'm not, I'm not a career criminal, but but I but I um, <laughs> not yet. Give it time. Yeah, I was gonna say, give it time. <laughs> <laughs> give it time. Um, but I, I am I am. I just I just didn't get it. Uh, yeah. and and uh i didn't need to i was i was always, like i could just i just understood stuff so i didn't understand why other people didn't understand stuff i think it kind of made me a little bit suspicious too i thought that they were like pretending not to understand stuff and then sometimes they were because i was i'm very especially when i was younger and, and a kid like like being smart doesn't mean you're you're less difficult to fool i feel like yeah. in some ways it was a lot easier to lie to me and trick me I, I, sometimes I it is yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Alex was like that as well. Like, which discourages you from trying to learn from other people too. If you have have a few bad experiences of being tri- tricked and manipulated, then that's even yeah. less reason to want to go and trust someone. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it's hard. Um, I do think that smart people are more more prone to this in some ways. It doesn't it's, it doesn't protect you from trans ideology being uh, persuasive. Yeah, that's a good point. I I also think it's just an incredibly difficult time of of the world. You know, the Earth in the Mm -hmm. west to to be living in like it's such a bizarre time we've all got you know these little contraptions that we carry around that we're at everyone's beck and call all the time we have all the information we could ever need you know we've now got elon musk telling us that he can put that into our brains and Mm -hmm. you know you've got gaming you've got anime you've got a thousand different fashions and music and it's so right loud there's so much white yeah. noise everywhere. And I just think for kids, you know, when we, you and you and I grew up, we're probably, I'm probably a bit older than you, but when you and I grew up, it was tough. And we probably both had our grandparents telling mm-hmm. our parents, well, you know, it's hard for their generation. And I look at my son's generation and I think, Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. TikTok, Twitter, trans this, binary that. I, I, he's, I and, just don't know how he does it. You know your 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 brain is plastic and developing over time, and so <laughs> if you're if you're practicing shifting your attention, you're practicing going to that next like immediate feedback of social media, which I'm yeah. I'm no it's not like I'm immune to this either. Um, it's very reinforcing, but at the same time, you need to practice to develop the skill of being able to focus for a long and sustained period. Mm. Uh, and I don't I feel like like they're getting so much less practice at that. Of they delaying are. gratification, of of uh, producing something, of uh, being in the moment, and and I wonder what's the, what's that going to translate to? Because there, it's it's social media likely would predictably have less of an impact on an, a developed an adult who never had it as a kid, but somebody who has it as a kid is going to be affected by it differently. Um, yeah, and I I think as well, we, we might well be bringing up a generation of addicts. And the reason I say that is because I look at, and I know, listen, I'm not by far not the first person to say this, but I'll just pass on the message um, that, you know, uh, social media for the kids is very much like gambling. You know, they, they, they put something on Instagram mm-hmm. and they're yeah. waiting for that first comment back. You know, they keep yeah. looking at their phone. How many people have commented? How many people like what I had to say? Yeah, and especially that, with TikTok. Like, like, yeah, I made a four second video where it was a bird that flew through two guys heads, their, their heads, four heads were touching and then it like landed by the camera. And I was just like, I don't know what gender identity that was, but I'm in favor of it. And it got like 400,000 likes (laughs) in like two days. It was the biggest video I ever made. It was just like that kind of gambling reinforcement is really addictive. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Fun, But, but, and then frustrating when you can't do it again with similar videos. I was like, oh, what if yeah. I just found a bunch of Hawk videos and just keep making the same joke? Can I just keep <laughs> can I get to the point where everyone on TikTok has seen at least one of my Hawk videos? Hawk <laughs> videos. 
I feel like the harder you do, because I had a video, nothing like that, but I had 150,000 uh, views. Mm-hmm. I don't know how many likes, because it was on YouTube. And I feel like the harder you try, the worse you'll do. Yeah. Sometimes, like, you can try and repeat that that kind of magic or that, the timing. You know, a lot of the time it's just timing. Yeah, my viral ones have been really random. And it's just it's just yeah. what the yeah. algorithm randomly, coincidentally thinks is... Like, because the, the algorithm's gambling, too. Yeah. So, Absolutely. Um, if, if it decides that your, your video is better than it is, like, the same video won't get the same response later, just based on, on a, you know, a fraction of a second of clicks. Yeah. Click time difference or something so random. We're just having a mass orgy of gambling. Everybody is going to be a gambling addict in 25 years. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, there's, <laughs> of some there's, sort. And, you know, it's going to affect some people more than other people. Like some people are, are genetically and functionally, for whatever reason, more and less prone to addiction. So it's it's and then the people that are more prone to addiction, they they are going to also be more prone to pl- to blame. You know, they're going to they're going to be like in Jazz's family where they, they don't want to attribute it to the puberty blockers and the trauma. So they're going to say, well, we addiction runs in our family. Winston stopped writing, partly because he was suffering from cramp. He did not know what had made him pour out this stream of rubbish 